Everything, everything discussed on this show originated as public information. My commentary is given about what has been said or done by somebody in public. That means it got to be public first before I talk about it. If you don't want to be this darn scuss, then don't do it. Let's go. Our feature is a call to the gifted to come out of the shadows of others and come to the center of the stage and feature. Let the whole world, including your haters, see you burn bright with the fire of your purpose. I did this and left 20 years of pastoring traditionally to enter the world of entertainment. I was ridiculed and misjudged. I suffered. I pained. I healed. And now I feature. I'm the one you never mentioned I feature While they hating, speculating about their paper I feature Burn the minds, make that fire move on higher I feature Bring fame to the name, make them change that I feature While they hating, speculate, anticipate that Get up, catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever worry about them Get, get, get up, catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it Let me in laughing with me like we friends See, I ain't down with that pay for play Throw in Benji, man Because I work the system Shave the system Play the system Beat the system Look at all the minds on me Cause I'm making history I feature While they hate me Speculating about that paper I feature Burn down my eyes Make that fire move on higher I feature Bring fame to the name Make them change it I feature While they hate and speculate Anticipate that Grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever worry about them Get, get, get up, catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever worry about them Don't you ever stop doing your thing Don't stop, don't quit Gotta let me see you go left Keep on striving, keep on dreaming Your dream ain't high worldwide Don't ever lose your focus don't lose focus. Focus. Get up, catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them. Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever, blow it, bottle. I feature while they hate and speculate about their paper. I feature burn them eyes, make that fire move on higher. I feature green fame to the name, make them change it. I feature while they hate and speculate, anticipate me. Everybody dance around loud as you can't stop hard, put your feet on the floor. Ain't nobody fly like you, lift it up, turn around and let it all go. I, I, I don't wanna hear it cause you're running into fish, step back home, we don't interrupt. Walk it up and step cause I'm throwing it on purpose and I fuck this never ever giving up. Yeah. Okay. Big, big, big. This has been a B Slay production.
And welcome to Larry Live Pop-Up Show. I ain't got no business been up here on the show because I'm still trying to get well for my live show. That's right. There's going to be a live show on, <coughs> see that, this Saturday at 7 p.m. in Atlanta at AIB Studios. I'm talking about a live live show you want to be a part of history because it's going to be our very first live show and then they'll uh, i probably hit a few cities up but it won't be no live show recording we'll just do larry live in a city near you if you want to be here on this saturday go get your ticket right now and go to larrylive.com and you click get your tickets and you can meet me there my biggest audience is in atlanta my second biggest audience, I think, is on the West Coast. I ain't looked at analytics in a long time. So y'all just need to go get y'all ticket and come on here. And I'm going to feed you real good in the VIP section. Well, there is something that is going on in these social media streets. Now, this is an entertainment show. We laugh and we cut up. And we're going to always do that. But sometimes we run into some stories that really is a little bit serious. And this recent story... We had heard it was broke actually in Detroit because people heard the commotion that was going on at the, what I have called the Plantation Network, but really it's the Word Network. <clears throat> the owner, Kevin Adell, and between him and George Bloomer. So the commotion got out. So it happened in public. So that's how we ended up on this show. And then it spilled over to social media because George Bloomer made a comment. Skinty George Bloomer. That's the skinny George Bloomer. Not the big old one that wrote witchcraft in the pews. We're talking about the skinny one. Mm-hmm. I think it really looks nice too, but you know, I'm just going to clown him a little bit with that anyway, because this is entertainment, so I can do it. Anyway, <clears throat> what ended up happening, what I saw that was very interesting to me that really done got up under my skin is that here we have, a whole lot of you did not know that this network was owned by a white man. Now, I don't have any problem with a network, a magazine, or anything being owned by a white person. And black people are the patrons or the black dollar funds it. That doesn't bother me. As long as there is some sensitivity to what it is that black people have have went through and still going through in America. There is absolutely something that is going on in America, and it is the result of America's first sin, in my opinion, which is slavery or racism. Now, this white owner has been less than sensitive to the black talent and the black dollar that is on his network, allegedly. He saw fit and okay, along with other racial slurs, to send after George Bloomer <clears throat> had already said that it is not okay for you to send or to, to uh, tweet and text this picture. This is the original picture. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm going to kill this person that worked with me because they don't know what they're doing. That's the picture that he texts afterward. This is the original picture. This is the original picture right here that was tweeted out. Him being the pimp of these black dudes that are black talent or black preachers or black artists. And he told him that this is the equivalent of black face is not proper, it's not right. So then the next thing he sent, one of the next things he sent, one of the next thing that he sent was this picture. The one that he showed you first that he won't supposed to show you. Mm, that one. <clears throat> he painted it. Of course, he probably got an iPhone because it looked like the iPhone edit feature. In the darn way. So the next thing we began to do as black folk that was perturbed, because I was, was say, okay, there should be no black people on this network. Don't send your black dollar in. If you got a show, cancel it. You heard me right. That's right. Cancel your contract. Get on up at the show. You need to stop being on this network. Just let Rob Posse, Joyce Myers, Joel Osteen, whoever else they got, let them stay up there. <clears throat> but we are put to make a statement, a statement of dignity. And I begin to notice that out the woodwork, all these new faces on these new flyers with the word network symbol, the plantation network, was being put all over the internet after they saw that the owner had disregarded, disrespected, demeaned one of their black brothers. <clears throat> because if you do it to one of us, bruh, 
You do it to all of us and all of us and all the Africa in us <laughs> should get offended. All the Africa in us should be offended. And what I notice is hmm, this is this is this is horrendous because I'm sending all these people. You remember the lady that said the word bitch in the pulpit? Her video had actually went viral. And there was a book deal that George Bloomer had got her in. And in this book deal, these people called him, was like, look, there's this viral video. This is not going to do good for sales. She was about to lose her book deal. He called me and begged me to let her come on the show to explain herself. And she did. And I thought that she was a personal principle. And she very well could be, but she's not making the best decision as it relates to this. I just got off the phone with her, actually, and I called her. I said, Sharon, look. This is not good. I made a post about it. And this is the post that I made. Because somebody asked me during the live, where was, yes, in the email, downloaded. I said, where was Greg Davis? He's also another, um, I almost said character. He's also another preacher that is on the network. And I said, where is he standing with this? I mean, what what is, what is really going on? <clears throat> and from what I understand, he is still a part of the network, and I had told them in that live, I didn't know at the time, I said, wherever the money is at, that's where he's going to be, because he just strikes me as that kind of person. I could be wrong. So when I saw this flyer up, of course, I put, I took off the word network symbol, and I put the plantation network, and I saw my girl up there, and then I saw Greg Davis. I, this bothered me terribly, so I called her, and I saw her live saying she was going to be on the network. <clears throat> and my concern is this. Why aren't we sticking together? Okay, just forget that. <clears throat> let's just take out the let's just take out the aspect of okay, you get on the network, you preach to try to help people that listen to them. Let's just look at the principle of humanity and dignity. When one of us has been disrespected by a network, you know, there's a network, TBN. TBN, Daystar, there's a whole lot of different ones, but most of us know about TBN. We've seen black people up there. We ain't never heard of the Crouches ever saying or doing anything that was demeaning towards black people. <clears throat> we always saw them. In fact, they discovered, they brought T.D. Jakes to us. Never saw this type of stuff that was going on. So I was very interested in finding out, you know, how is it that you guys been a white network, white owned rather, <coughs> you've been able to cater to Southern gospel, contemporary black gospel, traditional black gospel, and deal with all sorts and races and kind of people. That takes a grace to do that, especially something, a network that has done it this long. And so I was interested, of course, Paul and Jan Crouch, they are deceased, they're no longer with us. So, but then I know that there is the son. And so I was able to have a phone conversation with the son. And I told him, look, it is extremely important. These things that you are saying right now on the phone, it is important for us to hear exactly what you have just said. And so I made a statement to him. I said, how about we go live? He said, yes, of course, give me 10 minutes. And I asked for a little bit more time. And so he just texted me and just said, give me a little bit more time. I'm coming in 10 more minutes. And so as soon as I see him pop up right here, we're going to hear directly from him about this racial insensitivity that we have seen from this owner. Allegedly, Kevin Adele of the Word Network, which I have coined now the Plantation Network, and any black preacher that is still up there, pan for their time, still up there, preaching right hard, you are now a Plantation preacher. And the reason why that I'm saying that <clears throat> is because you know that there has been a breach in the respect level from the owner to one of us. Even if you don't like the person and think whatever you think, the point is, K 
can we ever get together on one thing and say this is not okay to do to us? I also talked about Jamal Harrison Bryant because he talked about this whole Amber case <clears throat> and both the Gene case, but then there was no mention and no speak out concerning his friend George Bloomer that basically had a huge hand along with Neil Ellis and getting your hips up there in the New Birth Church. I couldn't understand that. Very interesting to me. And then with Sharon with the things that um, Bloomer has done for them, and I'm like, I ain't even cool with Bloomer like that. I mean, he okay. I don't think he's a bad person. We, our birthday is in the same month. We both got the same astrological sign. You know, but this ain't got nothing to do with him. As far as I'm concerned, whenever, and maybe that's the reason why I'm the one that got Larry Lab because I'm the one that will always address these injustices. It seems like others want to address the injustices. Did I get the right number? But I will address the injustice, and I don't care that it's attached to the church that I love and that I was raised in and still love to this day. If it's not right and it ain't proper, it ain't right and it's not proper. And this ability to be able to just allow women, children, and other different injustices and things of that nature that to happen as it relates to our people. I think that maybe this is a wake up sign that the church, some churches, not all churches, need to be up under some kind of scrutiny because some churches, not all churches, and some leaders, and not all leaders, have clearly dropped the ball. And we are all focused. Think about. Now, this is an entertainment show, and I hate to even be this serious, but if you're going to do Christian TV, at least do what Christ would do. And you know how Jesus was when it came to the children, it came to the people that were victims, it came to people that were done wrong. But I think it's time now for us to go ahead on and continue to have this conversation that needs to be had and I wanted to hear from a network that has been able to handle all different hues of humans and show them respect and show them honor and show them love and appreciation. And in my opinion, the Crouches have been able to do that. And I'm not just saying that. I was a watcher of TBN. You, your parents were. And we've never seen this insensitivity at all as relates to other humans. And this needed to be addressed. So right now on the line we have Paul Crouch Jr. And I am so honored to have him up here to speak. And thank you so much, Paul, for having the, I'm gonna say the, the, the boldness to speak concerning this situation. Well, thank you, Larry, it's an honor to be here. And you know, my father was driven literally by one thing, and it was Mark sixteen fifteen, and we've all heard that scripture a hundred times, is go into all the world and preach the gospel. And that's what Christian television was for. It's what it was about. I mean, there's always, you know, a financial element to any business or any ministry. You know, you have to pay bills and keep your lights on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my dad's true sole purpose was to touch and affect people's lives. And that's what I grew up with, getting mm -hmm. people healed, saved, delivered, whatever. And it didn't matter, you, you know, what color you were. I mean, you could be, remember the old song in Sunday school, red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's really what I grew up in. Yeah, but it, uh, all them hues are not precious in the sight of some people. And one of the things that we've just, <laughs> we've just ran into, and it's boiling my blood, and we want to do this interview real quick. I'm trying to wrap it up in 10 minutes. But the thing that really concerned sure. me, and we were talking on the phone, there was something that you said as it relates to being racially sensitive and aware and conscious. I want you to talk a little bit about right. that. Yeah, you know, TBN started in 1973, and 
you know, it started here in Los Angeles. And, you know, I mean, my, Jim Baker and my father were the, the, the instigators of Trinity Broadcasting. And uh, obviously, Jim Baker left a couple of years after TVN started and started PTL Club. But Dad, um, you know, and the rest is history with Jim. And Jim is kind of resurrected from the ashes, as we know. But uh, you know, Dad held on to TBN and grew it slowly, one station at a time. And as we grew as a network, obviously we needed good content. We needed good music. We needed good uh, preaching. We needed good teaching. Uh, we needed good movies. And, uh, and we reached out. And, and quite frankly, even though it was started by my father, who's, I guess, you know, European, white guy, whatever you want to say, you know, we found in later years that the most dynamic musicians, the most dynamic speakers were African-American. And so my mom found uh, in a little conference at Somebody Center a guy that we now know as T.D. Jakes. You know, uh, Creflo Dollar was discovered and, and brought... Uh, to the forefront by TBN. Uh, we used to have Andre Crouch on, and it kind of resurrected his ministry and music uh, ministry a little bit. So, listen, my dad was truly colorblind, and I, you know, and I grew up in that, and I'm the same way. Whoever is going to preach and bring the gospel, the unadulterated gospel, and get people touched, delivered, and saved. You know, I don't care what color you are. You can be green. You know, if you can preach and touch people's lives, that's what we were looking for. Yeah. Now, the reality is, I'm glad that you said that. We know that when it comes to the area of spirituality, the preaching, the teaching, the miracles, the signs and wonders, we're not the only people, but the black church has a huge contribution to Christian TV and things of that nature. And we've seen it. Um, now the, oh, the question. now the word network. What has recently happened concerning the word network? This is the thing that really concerned me, because we know that, right. and many of us for years prior prior to this situation, <clears throat> I'm going to say there are thousands of people that are just finding out that it is not black owned. Ain't no big problem with that. Right. But then when the owner allegedly paints blackface, sends it to one of the the black preachers begins to say call me father i'm your i'm your boss um you're my tattoo you know i don't you know you're just being too sensitive you know is this good enough for you and then continue to to send the pimp picture and also the black face picture over and over and over again this was a huge problem for me and a huge huge problem for thousands of us that are now signing a petition what do you have to say about that do do you even know kevin well i i I know kevin adele in fact i worked for the word network i left tbn in 2012 to go and pursue some other ventures and and to go produce some movies and different projects which i did but kevin in 2012 basically you know made me an offer i couldn't refuse and he needed to build a studio in there in uh, Southfield, Michigan. And I love building studios. It's one of my fortes. And I did. So I was around the word for about two years, two and a half years, building the studio, helping them get new programs. Mm. And, you know, and, and, uh, and I know that's really where I got to re-work uh, and, and kind of connect again with uh, Bishop George Bloomer, who I love and, and think he is one of the most fabulous preachers and and one of the most integral men I've ever known. Mm -hmm. But you're right. There's a racial sensitivity that we've all got to have. And, you know, I, I always thought in Christian television, you're supposed to focus on Jesus and not the color of anybody's skin. And uh, so I, I did see, you know, at the word network, you know, in their very inception and how the word was created was somewhat of, of a questionable tactic where, hmm. you know, he walked into the cable companies back in, you know, early 2000 
and basically strong-armed a lot of these cable companies like AT&T and Comcast and some of these others, and he walks in with Jesse Jackson in tow, Al Sharpton in tow, and some of these other, you know, African-American advocates and said, you know, Mr. Comcast, you're going to give us a African-American Christian channel, aren't you? Mm. Because all the other channels are all, you know, they painted us as white only uh, networks. And quite frankly, TBN was never a white only network. We loved T.D. Jakes. We loved, uh, you know, some of the African-American preachers, Paul Morton and, uh, you know, some of the guys were amazing and the best of the best. So we always had a, a large segment of African-American viewers and African-American programming. Mm -hmm. But Kevin birthed the network that way, kind of playing, I, I, you know, that you're, you can use your own uh, opinion, but a lot of people said he was playing the race card to even get the word network birthed. But like you said, it's owned by uh, a white guy. Now let me and, say uh, this. Let me, director. <clears throat> let me say this before you go on with the story, and thank you for sharing. Now, I have been on the Word Network. I was invited two or three different times <clears throat> to sing right. or to sit on the, the couch or things of that nature. It was during that time I realized, you know, as a gospel artist and pastor in you know, my few churches, I <clears throat> realized it was owned by a white man. I'm like, oh, wow. Did not know that. Right. Because I right. think that the, mar and I don't have a problem with that, but I just feel in my bones. I felt it from the beginning. I said it when I had George Bloomer sitting here on, in, on set doing the show, that it just felt as though it was a, a manipulation. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, a, a I'm going to give black people their own network, you know, because black people have right. great talent and whatever. It felt like it was right. a manipulation. And you just basically, <clears throat> you know, everything you say is alleged, but you just basically sort of confirmed to me that it was, you know, a tactic to take two of our voices out of our community, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, to, to get it up there. And that just makes another right. story that I know just very interesting because it seems as though he used them to get it and then put them off of the program because we used to watch the Rainbow Coalition on the web network. All that disappeared and things just began to change. Hmm. Right. Right. And he, yes. And I think, you know, for several years, Jesse got free airtime. But as far as I know, and I don't know, that I don't think he ever got any ownership or control or a percentage or anything. But like I said, to kind of show you or explain what I experienced, growing up at TBN, like I said, the gospel was what we were about. Touching and affecting people's lives were the focus of TBN. Getting people saved were, was the, in the heart of, of and the foundation of TBN. But with Kevin, I, I always, after a certain amount of period and time, realized man, this guy is all about money. I mean, it seemed like money was his God and not, you know, the Lord, you know, you know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And so it was always the pressure to make money, to do a telethon, let's do another telethon, let's sell a Bible, let's do spots that will, you know, sell jewelry or whatever. And listen, money has to be a part of every ministry and business, but it doesn't have to be the focus. Yeah. And very early on, in the, in the first couple of years, I realized, man, the pressure just gets, kept getting intense and more intense on, on Bishop Bloomer, on the different hosts and guests to make money, make money. And Kevin is a wealthy guy. I mean, he... Yes, he just spent 300, he a quarter of a million um, dollars just for the Adele Center and some other investments I saw on Twitter. I looked up. He is terribly wealthy. <clears throat> He's a millionaire over right. and over and over and over again. And just to just the research that I've done since I, this story broke, that is very true. I was able to talk to yeah. some of the people that were on the show. There was a lot of pressure, and even Juanita Bynum and him had a big fallout, and it was all about money. And he said to her, "You're going to come here, and you're going to raise this money." 
I, and say the same thing to her that was, this is all alleged, right. that, that was racially more insensitive in my opinion. But see, it had Agreed. not, it had, because of the relationship between Bloom and Juanita hasn't always been, you know, amongst all of these preachers, for those of you that are watching, things happen. So that information wasn't right. shared. <laughs> so sort of what we're seeing now with this stuff that is, because he has been insensitive towards Bloomer, we're saying two things. We're saying some people come back together and be like, well, it happened to me too. I just didn't tell you and I thought it was just me, you know? And then we're seeing other people like over the past week, I'm seeing new black faces, if I can use that word, who, right. who are now sure. being pumped on the word network that doing this event, that event. And it's just really sad to me that my people, and I know you, you can't really speak to that because you're a white man, but I'm going to speak to it. <clears throat> but I, it's really a shame to see my people, you know, not pull together and say, no, this is not okay. And if you do this to one of us, right. you do it to all of us. Now, I'm very interested in knowing you were there for two and a half years. I, and, and this is going to be a very transparent question you don't have to ask. Now, I have a whole lot of white friends. And I always would ask sure. them, I grew up around white people, and I would always ask them, when y'all by y'all self, do y'all be saying nigga? Do y'all use the N word? <laughs> you know, do y'all, what, what right. do you say about us? Do you say we stink the way that, way that we say y'all stink? You know, <laughs> what, how does that all work? And I want to know from you being around the owner, and we know everything you say is alleged. Have you ever heard him use the N word? Honestly, I, I, I have not. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in that, you know, and again, I was not priv privileged to be in every meeting, and I know he's got a a CFO named uh, Ralph Lametti that mm -hmm. kind of carries the purse strings there at TBN or <laughs> at the Word Network, and mm -hmm. uh, so I did not, but I, I did hear racially insensitive things. You know, when Kevin gets mad. Oh. You know, trust me, I heard some language that would make a sailor blush. So I did hear stuff like that. But mm. uh, I just never got the impression that the gospel was the primary focus of this network, <laughs> that it was just a cash cow and, uh, you know, some way so that Kevin can buy and, and, and buy a, or finance another car, which... You know, listen, oh, I, I heard about that. Oh, Paul, people. they told me that right there on the property that he have garages for a whole bunch of cars, Bentleys and things of that nature. And I also heard that when Bloomer was saying, you know, this is improper, you shouldn't be doing this. He said, look, you can hop in my Rolls Royce or my Bentley, I can't remember this one, and I drive you over there to the impact network that's black owned since you got such a big <laughs> problem. Now, that's what I heard. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and like I said, I, I have heard some, you know, some very insensitive things. Kevin's famous quote to me was, you know, I put the devil on the word network if he'd pay his bill on time. Now, that I did hear to my own ears. And again, whether we're saying it tongue in cheek or seriously, I don't know. Uh, but I do know, you know, to some people, he did have. Louis Farrakhan on. He yeah. did bring Louis Farrakhan on, <clears throat> on the see, network. But see, that was through Jamal. Man. That was through Jamal Harrison Bryant, which is a whole nother situation right. that I mentioned before you came on because I don't understand. Well, yeah, I do understand now. Before, two days ago, I was saying I don't understand how and why Jamal isn't speaking out. But the thing is, it's not big enough yet. When I see with Jamal, right. If it's a big movie, he gonna preach it. If it's a, a trending right. conversation that you know police killing um, black people, he gonna talk about it. But if he can't benefit right. from the clout of it, and if he can't benefit from you know that trend or whatever it is, he's not interested in doing it. And in my opinion, although I think he is good at what he do and good he over there at New Birth, but for me right now, he's an opportunist. He's a clout chaser, right. and that could be the reason why he would two days later. Later, go right on the word network because there's an opportunity for him to be front and center and maybe a whole lot of these other preachers like Greg Davis all of them were envious of George Bloomer being the quote-unquote bishop of the word network and really now are trying to put their bid in to now be and I'm gonna say this Paul because I said it's on the show but just close your ears to be the new house nigga 
That's how I see it on the right. plantation network. Right. Yeah, and and, and like I said, uh, I, I agree with you, I, and, but I just know too, you know, there was such a disparaging, or a disparaging feeling that I had to deal with because, you know, like I said, he the, the other issue, you know, he was bringing in money. We were selling Bibles. You know, the telethons were doing fairly well. I did, uh, Bloomer and I did four or five, maybe six telethons for Kevin with Juanita Bynum, you know, with uh, the who's who of Christendom and uh, Paul Morton, Richard Roberts, um, goodness, mm-hmm. we had some wonderful guests and speakers. But then the next week, I'd be dealing with subcontractors that I'm trying to pay bills, I'm trying to pay for equipment or pay for crew that we hired, and they would string out their subcontractors sometimes months, if not years, mm. but, and people practically had to get on their knees and beg or threaten to get paid. And I was like, you know, how scriptural is that? You know, the, the Bible talks as much about money as it does anything else, as we know, and how to, the rich young ruler, how to treat your servants, how to treat people, uh, you know, a, a, a laborer is worthy of his hire, you know, blah, 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 blah. We all, but I, I, I got very discouraged, you know, after raising millions of dollars the next week hearing people crying and moaning to me about not getting paid. And, you know, we bought some lights, and it would take six months before Ralph would pay the guys. So you're and confirming, that, that, I'm sorry, but you're confirming, I don't know if you saw that show, but you're confirming what George said. George talked about a $25,000 donation that was allegedly sent to him <clears throat> that he never got. You know, and they also right. talked about some Bibles that he sent about 1,700 Bibles out. I do know about the Bible program, and I've heard some other things, even right. about Takeda doing the Talits, the prayer shawls, and people not getting them and they're selling them. I, this for me, Paul, and I don't know the reason that you left, but this for me, Paul, I do know that you have to have donations. We saw this in documentaries with your mom and your dad and documentaries with sure. Jim and Tammy sure. Baker. I get that. I know that. I ask for donations sure. on this network. There's uh, thousands of dollars every month that it costs for me to do this show right here. And people just think it just come free and it's supposed to be free. Thank God for patrons. Right. But anyway, and partners. Right. But it just appears to me that it's very easy for a preacher or a network owner like Kevin Adele to just really get into this thing to where they're they're doing business without Christ's principles. And as a result, right. it it creates this this cesspool of 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 sin like racism. Right. Yeah, and then listen, there's no degree of sin as we both know, and, and the love of money is the root of all evil, and that's you know, money is not the root of, of all evil, but the love of it is. And that's mm. what, you know, a lot of people don't understand. And, and that was what was very disparaging and, and sad for me was just, you know, I started to feel like, you know, I'm just there to, to make a, a wealthy guy wealthier. And, mm. you know, eventually we parted ways and, you know, he tried to, as he's doing with Bloomer, I think, try to destroy the guy. And he tried to, he put out a press release on me that I... I don't even remember what it was, but it was <laughs> untrue. And, uh, you know, but we moved on. And listen, when God closes one door, yeah. multiple other doors will open. And we all know that. Hold and, on, Paul, Paul and you I, said. I don't wish the guy any ill, but I just, I just really felt like he, he was a, <laughs> my dad used to joke, he was a full business gospel man. Putting the business before the gospel. gospel yeah. Instead full of a gospel. full gospel businessman. Oh. And uh, and that that's really what hurt my heart. And uh, you said uh, you, like you said you said I'm sorry to interrupt you. You said that he put a press release out. What is very funny about this? My sources say that a very prominent black bishop that he's supposed to be friends with and respect called him 
and said, look, this is what you need to do. You done wrong. Do a press release right. apologizing and clearing Bloomer because there are vloggers and all these people saying that he stole money and, so, and all this right. other kind of stuff and clear this up. His response allegedly was, I don't do press releases, but you telling me that he done one on you. He said, I don't do press oh, releases. Boy. And he said, oh, George Bloomer going to be back. I'm his daddy. I'm his father. He, 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 I'm, he need, I made him. He's getting too big for his britches. Right. He'll come back. I said, what? Yeah. And, and wouldn't apologize and the for the racial the slurs. Matter. <laughs> yeah, and, well, Ke you know, listen, pride cometh before the fall, and Kevin's a very proud guy, and, and you know, as, as many ministers are. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, the first, you know, person to put Bloomer on TV was Garth Kuntz at TCT. It was True. not the word network. True. And then we used to have Bishop Bloomer on TBN all the time. He was uh, one of the best uh, preachers and and we used to have him on in Atlanta for our telethons, and man, that boy can preach like no other. Uh, so, you know, Kevin and the Word was, you know, was not his first rodeo, and, and Bishop is a smart guy, but, you know, he's a, he too is proud, and, and he is, he's fighting mad, as you know, based on what Kevin's doing to him, and I, I don't blame him, and that's why yeah. I said, Bishop, I'm I'm in your corner. I'll help you however I can. Yeah, exactly. You know what? You've done that today, and I thank you so much for not only just speaking okay. on on the situation, but also speaking to other white businessmen who have businesses that that the black dollar and black talent are the patrons of. You know, and um, right. for you to say and speak about racial insensitivity i think that was very powerful and i thank you so much for that and trust in this platform well it's my pleasure and listen if any of us cuts our finger or, or gets hurt we're all bleeding red blood if, True. You know, how much melatonin you have in your skin versus me versus uh, you know, a Mexican guy versus a Puerto Rican versus a Japanese. You know, the mix of melatonin is irrelevant. God judges our hearts, and that's what is important to me. I want to lay up treasures in heaven, not down here on earth, because it's all going to burn anyway. You're right. Thanks so much once again. All right, brother. All right. Now, you were doing good to that last part. I just... <laughs> And I understand what he's saying. A whole lot of white Christians say that, you know, we all got the same blood and, and it doesn't matter. Well, it don't matter when it comes to God. But when it comes to down here living, especially in America, that melatonin does matter. I, some of my white friends were saying some statements like, you know, I don't understand why white people, why black people think all white people are racist. You know, it's just like it's just slavery it happened many years ago. I don't see how it affects now. I, and I always tell them, look, don't make that statement. Don't make that statement publicly because it's an ignorant statement and it's an insensitive statement. I was not in slavery, but my blood remembers. It's still in me. And there have been situations and comments and things I didn't know why I felt passionately about. And it's because it's still in me. And I had to say this to my white friends. <clears throat> Although you may not have anything in your heart towards people that look opposite of you, I know that what has happened is in my blood and you need to know that what has happened is in your blood and that's why you need black friends for them to check you to show you when you're being racially insensitive when you are being next you know <laughs> not aware of your privilege you know that's why it's important for all of us to be able to to cohabitate now i know louis farrakhan say look give us our part of america we go over there y'all go over there and give us some time to work on our issues i do understand what he means but there's still a learning, I think, that needs to happen between the races. And Kevin Adele, in my opinion, has not learned. He has not learned. And this is the reason why he was able to text. I want y'all to look at this blackface. That's why he was able to text this to George Bloomer and that other picture, the pimp picture, <coughs> over and over and over. And then tell him how to feel about his blackness. I, 
I do. Let me tell you what I said to Sharon, because I talked to her. She told me, I don't want to get in that. That's not my business, you know. I'll just pay my time, and I do what I do. Okay, Sharon. And I like her. But you got to see this for what it is. We have got to stick together. Put Larry Live logo up there. I'm say what I got to say. I'm going to get on off this thing. Maybe I should open up the phone. Y'all want to talk to me a little bit? <clears throat> I'm going to take five phone calls. Put the number up there. Lord, you're moving so slow. Okay, put the number down here. <clears throat> I'm going to take five or six phone calls. You got one minute. Tell me your name and where you're calling from. If you want to talk on anything concerning this conversation. And I'm putting in there, I need for y'all to sign the petition right now. Sign this petition the day. Right now on the day. <clears throat> sign up and this is what y'all need to do. all y'all black folk that don't move away from the country and you go see big mama and them and grandma and them they still watching the word network it stay on that channel all day long and if they got a nielsen box then that help the word network get their advertisers and all this different kind of stuff and their analytics tell them do not watch in fact call for them and cancel the subscription that's what I want y'all to do. That's how we're going to handle this. So to teach him this valuable lesson. Number one, we're valuable. Our experience in America needs to be um, clear to you, and you need to be sensitive towards it. I don't, I don't care. Ow. You need to be sensitive towards it and treat and talk to us with respect, or we will pull our support. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is what the power that, we have as a people is not just our voice. You guys in America, it's our dollar. Our dollar. And black folk, I'm, I can say this because I'm black. Black folk will tell you right now they ain't got no money for to be a $12 a month patron, 40 cents a day. But let the new Jordans come out. Huh? Let it be a holiday. I don't, I've always wanted some Christian Louis Vuitton or some Louis Vuitton. They go to the real store and buy. When you go here in Atlanta, well, Atlanta may not be a good example of this. And you go to these high-end stores and to Phipps Mall ain't nothing but high-end stores. It ain't, well, except for um, Rashida Place and then the Nordstrom's in there. But everything else is high-end. Giuseppe in them and this one and that one and that one. It's us in there shopping like it's Walmart. <laughs> that black dollar I'm trying to tell you so this is what I need for you guys to do sign this here petition I'm putting in here sign this here petition and then call big mama and them and tell them to stop watching now see they're gonna and they're gonna look they're gonna show y'all how you supposed to act when you tell them what the owner did to, to bloomer he did what they're going to start giving you all of American history, what they experienced with doing, doing, um, when they were getting integrated in, um, into the schools with the white folk. I got to call my daddy. I ain't even told him. My daddy got jumped by the white boys when they first got, the black people got bust through the white schools. <clears throat> this is a whole issue and a whole problem. Did you hear me? It's a whole issue and a whole problem. Somebody said you should talk about Creflo Dollar adopting um a white kid <laughs> oh give me a little time let me get past this i'm gonna tell that whole story real soon i don't think there's nothing wrong with us helping other people we able to help but the thing that did cross my mind was why in the whole hell and the heaven you go adopt a white kid that is poor and in uh uh disenfranchised is still in a better state than a black person in America disenfranchised and poor. I'm, that, that's just what it is called, your skin is white. And I know a lot of people don't, know, don't, don't want to hear that and don't understand that, but it is what it is. Now, poor is poor. But I'm just saying. And there's some white people that understand this. We've always had white allies. We just had one that was just here up here. We've always had white allies in the movement. Ever since Martin Luther King, we always have. Thank God for them. Yeah. All right. Let's take the calls. <clears throat> Caller in it in forty four fifty two. What's your name and where you calling from? Hi, Larry. 
My name is Patricia. I'm calling from Southwest Georgia, yeah. and I'm a first-time caller, and I actually am a baby boomer, and I'm listening mm. to you because my millennial daughter turned me on to you. <laughs> and I just <laughs> and I'm actually just calling to just just give you a shout out and say I just appreciate you taking the stand that you take and mm. how you're encouraging us to um uh, move forward in this. And I just had an opportunity to say it. I was off and I said let me call him right now. Question. Tell him go ahead. As a yes, baby, as a baby boomer, when it comes to racism, what? Tell me, give me one of your experiences if you have ever had one as it relates to to the melatonin. You know, I, I, I've told my children this. You know, I, my grandparents. I was raised by my grandparents, and they actually protected us. Mm. Being in the South, um, I we used to have to go to certain bathrooms, but I never knew that it was because. We were black because we had to go to that. I just thought that was the bathroom to go to. And mm-hmm. so they protected us. Um, but uh, when, I, I, when, we, when I came to southwest Georgia, I, that's when I started seeing those little subtle things, uh, shades of racism that had mm-hmm. not uh, changed, you know, people doing stuff but in a different kind of way. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just learn how to survive it, how to make it through it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's... Uh, and uh, one of my jobs is to, as a, I work in fair housing, I tell people a lot of times, you know, they'll come and they'll bellyache, they'll talk, but unless you make a formal complaint and do something about it, nothing will ever get done. Mm-hmm. And so just driving people to move past, okay, we talk to each other and tell each other off about it, but unless you take that next step there you go. and make that written complaint, then nothing ever There gets. you go. Writ, written complaint. I'm glad I asked you that 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 um, that question because written complaint. Sign the petition, the link that I'm putting in there right now. It, really? Sign it. Make your voice heard. I've already I've already signed it, and I'm <clears throat> encouraging others. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just take that next step. You know, we can bellyache each other all day long, mm-hmm. but unless you take that next drive in action. You know, write it down, let others, you know, so we can push it, push it forward. Right. But like I said, I'm just pumped and I appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate the steps and listen. And if I had, you know, if I had that extra, I'll try to come see you live. But <laughs> it's not so this weekend. Okay. okay. It's but not hey, so. I'm okay. Cheering you on, okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. All right. Have a blessing. All right. You're just so quick. Next one. <clears throat> Caller in at 8916. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Alan Emanuel, I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia, 42 years old, and this is my first time really hearing your show, Uh-oh. but I just, you know, I'm, I'm with the last caller, first of all, thank you for doing what you're doing, and, and I think it's just crazy that this is going on, and part of what really bothers me about this is the fact that we, we have for too long used this idea of religion to, 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 to make people feel like everything's okay, you know, this idea that somehow because you love Jesus so you can't see color but when you go out in the real world everybody sees color everybody sees color and the people who say they don't see color that's because they purposely try not to see color Mm. realizing that it's it's not affecting them you see Mm -hmm. so at the end of the day we live in a society that is dealing with the reality of what it means to be in a country that enslaves people and then took 400 years to actually get them to, to a place of relative freedom and not real freedom in the first place. So we are dealing with these effects. And when the church starts acting like those effects are real in the church, that's the only way you can start making changes. It is with the dollars. Like, people got to wake up. If you don't, nobody cares what happens until the dollars are affected, even up to Trump. He said everything he could have said. Said every, It's not till money comes into play, and then people start going, oh, I guess. So if you really want to change things, the same thing is in the church. You just heard from Paul. Like, it's in the church. You have got to get rid of the, the connection between racism and money. When you start ad- addressing that, that is when some of these changes are going to be able to happen. You know, unfortunately, we're in a position where, we, we may not understand our own power with our dollars, but we, we really have to wake up. That's kind of where I'm at. You know, I know there are other people who need to 
speak, but that's that's my opinion. You preach. Thank you so much for calling in, man. Yeah. Caller ending in twenty seven seventeen. Give me your name. Where you calling from? Yes, sir. My name is uh, Billy Booker. I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I just wanted to say during the end of the call, um, maybe it's just me and maybe I'm reading too much into it. But um, when he uh, said, when he made the statement, the boy can preach, I just think it's little things like that, that, you know, they don't pay attention to. Yeah, I, I agree. I caught that. I felt that. I, I, I don't, I know it wasn't me. When he said it, I felt it, but I knew I felt it because somebody else felt that. Um, yeah, I, I get that. And but, and I've had a conversation with my white friends about things of, of that nature. It's going to take some time <clears throat> for white people to understand. And it's going to take us some time to understand some things about them. You know, um, I got it. I, I heard that too. Thank you so much. I just wanted to uh, put that out there. Thank you again. Thanks so much. All right, guys. So what you saying? I don't think he meant anything by it neither, but he said it. <coughs> I mean, I don't think he meant anything by it. You know. Yeah, he said the boy can preach. I mean, you know, but you know, they they boy was one of the things that was used. You know, you know, right right beside nigga, nigga boy. You know, nigga girl. You know. That that type of going on, I don't think he meant anything about it, but he did say it, and it's a matter of <coughs> being aware and sensitive, especially when you're talking to you know thousands of people. All right, I'm gone. I'll see you guys later. Make sure you get your ticket and meet me on this Saturday day and sign up. Text Larry Lap to three three two 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 because you don't know where I may end up. And on Saturday night, I'm going to be live on just YouTube with those from the VIP upstairs. We're going upstairs. <clears throat> those from the VIP. I'm going to be with those upstairs with the food. I'm going to go live from my phone. And we're just going to chat a little bit after the live show taping. Chat with you later. You go to the site, LarryLive.com, and click get your tickets. Bye.